I want to go to Boston. I want to go to every. I want to go everywhere. And we're going to see Gabriella and Uncle Bubba. And I want to go camping. So I forgot to film some of this, but what we're working on right now is getting the insulation panels in. Um, opted to go spray foam, uh, or I'm sorry, opted to go XPS foam board over spray foam um, because cost was an issue. Um, could just get the board a lot cheaper. Found a good deal on Facebook um, and Facebook Marketplace and went ahead and got the foam board that fits uh, perfect at an inch and a half deep. Uh, on the uh, hat channels there. So went ahead and did that. We'd have probably a better part of $1,000 in a spray foam kit ourselves. So this cost us a total of $250, I believe, um, for a bunch of this foam. I have a big trailer of foam outside uh, for 200 bucks. And actually some of it's gonna go towards insulating the rear window deletes. Uh, there you can see all the foam we got uh, and starting to cut it up here tonight. It's the same thickness as this pink stuff, but this pink stuff was brand new from uh, Home Depot uh, at about 20 some dollars a sheet, where the other stuff came out to less than eight bucks a sheet. Uh, we're also gonna use the one inch stuff that came uh, on that Facebook deal uh, to insulate these panels. So we'll have the, we'll have the, uh, all the window deletes insulated here shortly, hopefully. And, uh, the lowers will all be insulated. So the only thing left will be to do the ceiling. And we're gonna do that with the XPS foam as well by scoring. Um, keep in mind that the wall is gonna space this out a little bit this way. So it'll come up to about here. So we won't have too, too much. We'll have, we'll have our uh, insulation starting somewhere in here. We're gonna try and get it down as low as we can, but we'll see what happens with the, uh, with the curve there and how it handles that. Yeah, there's gonna be a thermal break there. and. It's not gonna be perfectly efficient like spray foam, but you know, we're not full time in this thing. So I'm willing to make that exception there to save us better part of 800 bucks. So we'll see how this turns out. I'll try to get some video of that here shortly. All right, so just catching you up on where we're at today. Started putting some test pieces in for insulation in the ceiling. Um, you can see kind of where I'm scoring it on the back side. It's definitely not optimal. It's not going to seal or insulate as well as spray foam would, but um, it's definitely working. So it'll definitely help. It's already helping. Um, we went ahead and got this thing fired up, and it's keeping us pretty warm. So. I think uh, it, it's not even on high, so it's probably around, sitting around uh, 10 to 12,000 BTUs right now. Um, and it's keeping this bus pretty warm. So that's good news. I think our, our heater, even if it's the smallest model at 20,000 BTU, it's gonna be plenty to, to heat us up. And I know some of that will change just because it's uh, we're going through coolant and water and heat transfer is not perfect, but we'll, uh, we'll see. We'll see how it works, but I'm thinking, uh, I think it'll work pretty well. So we're going to keep moving through here. Uh, we also hit everything with spray foam, a bunch of the cavities we couldn't get up in here. Um, stuff where I just didn't want to cut little slivers of insulation for. Um, so that's all drying. It's dry to the touch, but it's still soft inside. All right. So I already measured the ceiling openings. Um, so we know we gotta be about 31 inches, maybe 31 and a half inches uh, long, we'll say, and um, 25 and a quarter is my magic number to fit in between these hat channels. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this at 31 and a half this way. 
and then uh, snap that off and then chunk it off into 25 and a quarter inch sections. And then I'll be able to go through and score each one of those. Nice thing about this stuff is get it scored, pick it up, put a knee in it, and you break the tooth off. You gotta cut these at 25 and a quarter. One thing I've noticed about XPS foam is it will cut like butter this way, but it skips pretty bad this way. Show you a close up. This direction, smooth as butter. This direction. So it must be the way that this stuff is, uh, I guess made at the factory. It's got a graining to it almost. So now we're 25 and a quarter wide, give or take. And we're gonna lay scores on here at every three inches out to 18 inches. So three, six, nine. Actually, I'm gonna get picky and we're gonna put our score marks on the lettered side so we can have the non-lettered side facing out. So we're just gonna hit all of our scores now. We don't need to hit it the whole way deep because it's gonna pull about halfway through. And we'll just keep making cuts. Boot here. This is just liquid nails, project, general stuff. They say it sticks to foam board. For whatever reason, the foam board and uh, glue. There is a specific one made for foam board. It is hard to find, I don't know why. Maybe because you don't really need to use it and this stuff works just as well, but who knows? So now we're gonna put it up into place. All right, so I got my piece here. Just a little squiggly pattern on the back. Got my scores down at this end. So we're gonna put this end up in like this and just kind of punch it in. If you cut it right, it should fit just fine. Let's hope this one turns out right. There you can kind of see my score line. Another one, another one, another one. One more. And there she is. Looks pretty good. Um, I mean, it follows the contour pretty well, as you can see. So I'm not complaining. We're gonna to put tongue and groove over this is the plan. So any little, uh, any little bulges here and there, it'll, it'll, when we screw it down, it'll push the thumb down. So I think, uh, I think we're gonna be good to go with this. We'll see, uh, we'll see what, what kind of difference it makes for heat, even though we're already sweating in here in a sweatshirt, so. All right, so we got a couple panels done. Give you a look at how that looks going down through there. It looks pretty good, I think. What do you think, buddy? We got a lot of work done, but we still have a little more work. A little more work. We got a lot more work to do, but we got some done. Looks pretty good going back through here. And I'll tell you what, you can really feel it warming up from, uh, from this little propane heater. How about it, buddy? It's pretty warm, isn't it? Yeah. Yep, feels good. That's right, we gotta clean up as we work, right? Yeah. Pappy always told, told Daddy that. So there's a lot of other people. Daddy doesn't do that enough. And then I end up with a big stinking mess when I'm all done. You gotta try to clean up while you're working. Yeah. But you think I'm in here? Helping you. That's right, you're being a big helper. All right, so it's uh, early in the morning here and we're about to do a little test. So it's 32 degrees out on the dot, right? At freezing, 
snowing right now actually uh, here in Pennsylvania. I have pretty much uh, all the wall insulation in, a little bit of insulation, still needs to go back in in the walls, a couple panels missing. And the whole center row of the of the uh, bus ceiling is missing right now. So we're, you know, we're three quarters of the way insulated, we'll say. So we're gonna do a little test here quick and see how this little propane heater back here, um, just that little top heater will, will do. You can see there's some spray foam back here in the walls. There's a couple panels missing there. You know, we're most of the way insulated, but not completely. So we're gonna do a little test here and see how quickly um, this heater will heat up this bus to a livable temperature. We'll say we're gonna shoot for 68 to 70 degrees, um, a real comfortable temperature. Um, we'll see how this thing does. It's, uh, not, it's 9,000 to 15,000 BTUs. Uh, so we're gonna go on medium. Um, which I'm gonna guess is gonna put us right around 12,000 BTUs. So that'll give us a good idea of how this how this uh, insulation has made a difference. And then we're also gonna do it once the bus is totally insulated, uh, which should be later today, and see how see how if there's any difference in how how it heats. <laughs> So we're holding steady at 66. It was just at 68. It seems this thing goes in two inch or two degree increments. You can see the high was 68. 50% um, humidity right now because this propane burner makes it pretty humid in here, as you might guess, since it's not vented or anything. Uh, but right now we're looking at a 22 degree delta, 44 outside. And I actually think that might be incorrect. Um, I'm showing a little bit colder than that uh, right now. Last I checked, we were just still down in the mid thirties. Um, but it, it could be, it, it give or take a few degrees. Um, it's doing pretty well. Uh, this is on low. So, uh, that's 9,000 BTU or so says the box. One of the things I wanted to check was, uh, the actual heating units that were supplied on the bus. So the one up front right here, um, it's controlled. Over here, um, just a pretty standard heater control setup. Um, but right here, we can read that. If not, I'll put a picture in. Uh, it says free um, DEL, D-E-L period. I'm not sure what that actually stands for, but basically it's saying it's 90,000 BTUs. Um, and that's, uh, I mean, that's plenty. Obviously, um, this thing was meant to keep a bus full of kids or adults warm that's going down the road with drafty old windows and things like that. So um, it's a lot. And that's just the front heater. This heater here, that's 84,500. So 85,000, we'll call it. So total, uh, we have 175,000 BTUs worth of heat, potential heat in this. Uh, bus obviously we need nowhere near that because we are operating on a whopping nine or ten thousand BTUs right now so we need nowhere near that however um, it will be nice to have that on tap um, as mentioned I'm gonna be at least 20,000 BTUs on the uh, the diesel hydronic heater that we purchased so um, at least 20,000 could be as, as high as 40 and change um, but somewhere between 20 and 40,000 is likely what it's going to be. Uh, so we should have plenty of heat. Uh, keeping in mind that some of that heat's going to get devoted to uh, hot water. So domestic hot water is going to take away some of that uh, some of that efficiency. I would assume. I'm not totally sure how those systems work. Um, and then also, if we cho choose to use the uh, engine preheat loop, we will will be able to uh, preheat our engine with that diesel hydronic heater, uh, but that's also going to steal away some BTU. So we're going to make sure we have plenty to keep this thing warm. I think uh, as far as maintaining goes, I mean, temperature is climbing at 10, with 10,000 BTUs. Um, so I think uh, 10,000 is plenty to maintain. Uh, I shouldn't say it's climbing. It's, it's maintaining, I guess you'd say. Um, we're at 66 degrees still. So it looks like 10,000, give or take a couple thousand BTUs, what we need to just maintain obviously having more than that you're going to get up to temperature quicker uh which is which is a benefit um but uh i think it'll i think what 
what our diesel hydraulic heater is rated for, no matter what the rating is, it will be sufficient for what we're going to do. And I think we'll end up, uh, we'll end up with a pretty nice setup and a pretty efficient setup. So happy about that. <laughs> So the ceiling went in pretty good. Basically, I just scored scored these in the middle. I mean, you can see they're fairly tight to the ceiling. Um, everything looks pretty good. So I think we're good other than a couple small spots around the roof hatches. Here's a better idea. Roof hatches need a little bit of work, just a couple little small pieces in here. And the only thing we have left is Pieces here, pieces here, but run out of time. It's Super Bowl Sunday, so probably uh, watch the game here in a little bit, and I don't have time to get these uh, to get these down. So that's gonna have to come down. That air conditioning unit. You can see there's three panels in behind there that need fixed, um, and then this one back here has to come down, uh, and there's one large panel back here at the back. That needs to be insulated. Obviously, I haven't even gotten the seal, the stock ceiling down yet, so that'll have to come out. I think we'll probably have to insulate this bulkhead back here as well. If it's anything like the front, the front still needs to be insulated. Um, this section up here uh, will get insulated. That's pretty much open to the outside, uh, to where the light housings would be. So we're gonna insulate that, take that down, and insulate it, and. Uh, probably gonna end up building that out because that is, I didn't mention this before, but that is where our TV will go. So we're gonna have a TV up there. I'm probably gonna build it out this way. Um, you can kind of see here, if you stay to the left of the steps when you're coming in, um, you can, I mean, there's quite a bit of clearance here. So I'm, I'm over here, I can kind of build this out to almost halfway through the, to the door, maybe a third of the way out. Um, uh, the third the width of the door so we'll probably build that out have some storage up here um not sure what we'll use it for quite yet but storage is storage um and then we'll have the tv in the middle so it'll kind of be a little built in i think is what we're shooting for uh, it's definitely going to want to insulate behind that and uh and build from there Don't touch the button. No. Uh-oh. She switched this switch over here. <laughs>